good evening everyone my name is yajat goswami and i welcome you all on behalf of ivy professional school to today's special workshop on netflix movie recommendations we at ivy organize such workshops quite frequently and to stay updated about future workshops do follow our linkedin page the link will be posted in the chat box you can check it over there today we have with us a data science expert mr arpindu ganguly who will be conducting this workshop so i request all of you to be on mute and you may ask your queries during the workshop using the chat window i hope you enjoy this guys thank you so arpindu all to you thank you yajat for that uh, introduction good evening a very good evening to all i hope you guys are doing good uh, and more importantly i hope uh, you guys are doing safe and uh, i really i pray and believe that all all of your near and dear ones as well as all of you are also uh, doing safe in these in these challenging times so uh, let me uh, introduce you to the to the uh, to the workshop and i sincerely want uh, this workshop to be very interactive uh, so that you guys can uh, take the most out of it right and let me know if you guys can also see my screen uh, so as we know that uh, this that this small workshop is designed to uh, have a deep dive or i would say uh, the initial introduction on Uh, recommendation engines and especially uh, study of how netflix uh, uses it uh, in terms of how does netflix basically recommends us uh, our our favorite movies and 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 what what are the like the back and forth so what happens in in that way right so that that is basically the uh, the agenda of of this uh, of this session and uh, uh the session would be broadly divided into two halves so uh, the first half will is where we will uh just focus more on the uh, uh on on the concept part of recommendation engines like what it is it and and how how do companies basically execute it and in the in the second part we will basically uh, go on in terms of building an actual recommendation engine in python uh, so uh, so at at the end of the workshop obviously uh, the materials uh, uh, of the workshop will be uh, provided to you which will include uh, the 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 deck as well as the code uh, which will be a part of this workshop right so i i really want all of you guys to uh really use this session to have an understanding i know one hour is 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 not the optimal time of uh of understanding uh, uh recommendation engine in detail but i'm sure that this will this will at least help you get started and uh, uh initiate your curiosity uh in recommendation engines right uh and before i get started i would like to introduce myself so my name is arpindu ganguly and uh, uh i have been associated with iv for uh, quite some time since 2017 uh, uh been part of their delhi faculty and, and also part of their corporate trainings uh and uh, uh i also work uh, also part of accenture ai uh, based out of gurgaon um, so uh, where i primarily deal with uh, with machine learning and uh, deep learning models in the uh, retail and uh, assortment space right so that's that's brief in terms of my background uh if you have any questions throughout the workshop uh, uh feel free to ping if you uh, or even you can unmute yourself and ask uh, both are equally uh, like uh, recommended so uh, that's that and i hope i am audible my my screen is visible and we are good to go right everything is good uh yeah perfect so i will be using the chat window as as an uh, as a reference point for your questions so please do keep on pinging me the chat and and let's make it as interactive as possible right and uh, use this time uh, to to uh, to uh, to get to know about recommendation engines uh, from a netflix point of view so yeah so uh, let me put down the uh, uh yeah i so recommendations are we using I, i'll get to that uh, tanmay thank you for that question i will get to your uh, to your uh, to to this to this topic okay uh so uh, let me put down the agenda uh, so just to have a structure around the session so 
Uh, the first thing is obviously like uh, where and why. So, uh, so in, in any in any uh, any any of uh, machine learning algorithms in the data science space, uh, the first thing um, as an aspirant, as a practitioner, as an as a lead. Uh, uh, one wants to know is why we are using it and where do we using it? What is the business case of it, right? Because data science uh, is there to solve a business problem. It is it does not stand in the isolation. So it it is uh, made for solving a particular business objective optimizing a certain uh, uh, business context and so on and so forth, right? So we would like to understand that where and why, and definitely then comes what, like what exactly are recommendation engines? So we, we do want to know that uh, what is recommendation engines? And uh, then we will basically dive uh, deep dive into uh, like uh, the two broad types of recommendation engines, right? So uh, these are the ones which is majorly used across players and we will be talking about who are these players and and you will you as a we as the consumer knows about these players in fact and uh, then we will uh, basically uh, deep dive into the case study with on python on on actually building a recommendation engine so we will be using the famous kaggle uh, movie lens data and we will we will try to predict uh, uh, or we will try to build a recommender which can predict a movie uh, the movies based on a certain movie right so that would be the journey for from here on uh, so uh, to get started, uh, as I said, uh, the first thing is that why are we talking about recommendation engine, right? So uh, uh, it's very important uh, to understand why why is recommendation engine very important. So as we all know that in the uh, in the in the today's world there is a lot of digital players right so uh, so if we step back and if we if we go back in 2015 or 2012 right uh, uh, we were still using a lot of, uh, of offline stores right a lot of uh, of consumers like we are uh, we we used to do a lot of offline channel buying right but but right now and especially during the pandemic uh, which has grown multifold uh, is the presence of digital channels right uh, so uh, just to take a few names, right? Netflix, Amazon Prime, uh, Amazon itself, YouTube, LinkedIn, Mintra, Facebook, right? And there are there are multiple e-commerce e players, uh, as well as a lot of uh, traditional players who are also getting into the digital space, right? So I will I will take you an example of of this uh, big retail like Target in US, uh, which is actually going into a lot of uh, digital space, right? So. Because uh, because I uh, I think you will totally uh, uh, acknowledge the fact that we as consumers we are we are on the web 24 into 7 right most of the times either we are browsing the Twitter or on Instagram or on Facebook or we are uh, checking a web, web series out or something on YouTube right so on different different kind of things and somewhere. Uh, an ecosystem has been developed where where these companies are also hosting a lot of products, uh, doing a very very focused targeting. Okay, so I, I'll take you tell you an example of this. Uh, so just to uh, initiate the curiosity of it. So. Um, Few days back, I was uh, I was having some teeth problems, and I was talking to my friend about it. And 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 quite a sudden, I did not I, I did not search even for for, for some kind of uh, teeth issues, and and I started getting suggestions about it. Right, so uh, that's how that's how uh, and so that's how uh, the the entire uh, ecosystem is working. Right, and coming back to recommendations, uh, uh, I think you all have noticed, right, and these big players are basically making a lot of money by recommendations. So it's just, just like in a way that you want something and the player gives it to you, right? And um, that's what recommendation engine is, right? So, uh, and, and most of the time it's a hit, right? So most of the times uh, you watch a certain movie and uh, Netflix recommends four or five movies and there's a very high probability that you go on and, and see the other movie, right? So do you guys have, have, have that kind of an experience altogether? Uh, like, uh, like, uh, be it and be it in Google search, be it a search on Amazon, be it in Netflix, be it in YouTube. Do you get all of this like recommended videos, recommended friends, recommended professionals, right? So there is an algo. It does not, it does not uh, uh, just uh, throws you out in random. There is obviously an algo which is being used, uh, and this algo has is being 
uh, majorly accepted because given the given the rise of these players and and being also taken by other startups and other companies right so uh, imagine we are also using uh, like like in during these times the things like zomato or or swiggy right a lot of lot of us are also ordering food online right so what are these companies doing so just imagine uh, just let's let's for a moment you put yourself in the in the shoes of the pender goyal or 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 the or the ceo of of, of swiggy right so what what are they sitting on they're sitting on a data of Of, let's say uh, thousands or millions of restaurants all across India, right? And on your web screen, on when you open that particular app, when you open a Zomato or when you open a Swiggy at that particular time, there are certain recommended uh, restaurants which are popped up in your screen, right? That does not happen just as it is. That does not happen just as it is. There is a lot of algorithms. uh which which goes on into into the into the into the back end and that's how it's operating right so there are a lot of companies which are actually are taking it and um, and that's where if you start uh, understanding and obviously in course uh, start applying these kind of algorithms you get a lot of acceptability in the data science uh, industry and in the market uh, and obviously it's 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 an high end skill it's it's uh, it's it's an advanced skill right and and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of of demand right so yes definitely facebook friends and 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 so all of this all of these are are ways of 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 making money so one is like we all as i said we all are experiencing this in the, in the digital world right we 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 buy something and something else gets uh, recommended and that's how this entire thing works so as a consumer uh, uh I, i i start buying this and this ex- exactly is, a, is an is an example of cross selling right so if i go to the store what happens in the brick and mortar store right so we if i go to the store uh the there's another there's another person the salesman tries to sell something right but but that does not happen in the in the in the digital world right so we are there's no so called uh physical sales person but but the ecosystem of the of the entire digital experience makes us uh uh, uh buy buy something else right and that's and that's very very intrinsic in in nature right it's not it's not something which is pushed upon us but that's how uh, the the consumers do behave right and and that's where recommendation engines uh, play a lot of role so yeah so all of these movies all of these uh, they are the same uh, to just to uh, quote the numbers right just to quote the numbers uh, uh, 75% rented movies are from recommendation in netflix right so 38% of click throughs are driven through recommendation in amazon 35% of the sales are driven by recommendation and these are big numbers guys these are really big numbers given the given these are all giants in their own spaces and uh, the amount of revenue amount of the dollars that they are making through recommendation is 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 tremendous right and hence as and uh, so if if you try to uh, summarize that why we do want to learn about recommendation engine just not because we as consumers are facing it uh, but because uh, this as an uh, this as an solution is is very powerful right and there are a lot of companies there are a lot of a uh, startups there are a lot of uh, even traditional companies which are going into the space wants to explore the space and capture the market right capture the consumer and that's where uh, this uh, learning this algorithm really really uh, makes uh, make, makes a difference right so that was really the why part uh, coming to the what part of it right so uh, let's take a pause and let's try to uh, understand what really is a recommendation uh, system right so uh, basically how do we put it as a recommendation system is an information filtering system right so it's it's basically a filtering so imagine you have a huge corpus of so many things imagine a room full of so many items you are basically filtering a lot of these items and trying and you are you are trying to get something which is most uh, likely you want to use right uh, but that is happening from a machine learning perspective there is no human control per se so uh, basically it's a system that uses to predict the rating given by a user to an item right the predicted rating is then used to recommend to, to the user so there is a system in place and uh, the system is basically trying to scout of those items right which is highly likely to be uh, used by the user and 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 eventually uh, the system recommends them to the to the user and and the user uses it right so that's how the entire uh system works in as a part of recommendation system right so uh in terms of the architecture flow right uh in terms of the architecture flow 
there are three important things and let's let's take an example to understand it better okay we all use youtube right yeah all of you here use youtube everyone uh, just for browsing just for seeing the videos everyone here yeah yes, sir. so when you when you use, use youtube uh, and if you have friends just ask obviously the uh, the recommendations or recomm the videos which just pops up in your screen is different and it is very personalized uh, based on n factors and is different from what your very close friend is also maybe use must be using right so the idea is to make it as personalized as possible right so now uh, here is the catch so in youtube every day millions and billions of videos are getting uploaded everyone is uploading a lot of videos right so uh when you, when when there is a huge corpus of these videos the architecture of recommendation engine basically works on three principles okay what are these three principles the first is candidate generation the second is coding and then there is re-ranking okay so if, if you follow the image if you follow the this image so basically we start with the or youtube starts with a huge corpus of videos which it can recommend to you as an as an as an viewer right so it starts with a huge corpus of videos right then what it does is the scoring and how i will tell you what how and how what kind of technique it uses in terms of scoring so eventually what uh, you get is is a small subset of videos right and then what eventually what happens the youtube re-ranks all of these videos based on your uh, previous likes previous view time previous google search history so everything is taken into account and the re-ranking happens and based on that the based on that ranking so the uh, let's say out of these 10 videos or 20 videos or 40 videos there's a rank assigned right and hence the the video which gets the maximum rank is at the top is at the top right so so in in terms of if you want to if you want to like generalize the architecture uh from from three stand three point of views that's the first is like candidate generation so the first is there's a, there's a huge corpus of all of these videos then there is scoring which basically subsets the video and then finally uh there's a re-ranking of the video right so um uh, and what are these essentially so as i said in the first step like the the system itself gener generates a huge corpus and uh, uh, basically uh, here the idea is to reduce so start from huge corpus and then reduce how it reduces it's in the second step that's through scoring right so the there is certain scoring is happening and in scoring there are kind of two things which comes into picture which i will tell just in a few minutes and then there's a re-ranking right so a lot of factors are taken into account like additional constraints basically your likes uh, your dislikes your review time the google search history right uh, and uh, and and so on and so forth so a lot of your instagram uh, maybe a lot of apps are connected right so a lot of things comes into picture uh, and and hence that particular video pops up first in the screen right so yes definitely that's a, that's a, that's a very important uh, metric which youtube uses uh, so for example how much time uh, you are using or, or how much time you're spending so a lot of times we do not even click on the video right but sometimes we just even try to see the video or, or we just scroll up right or we scroll up right so at that point of time even if you are spending a larger amount of time so videos which are similar to that is also likely to come up the next time um, you are actually browsing right so definitely that's one of the constraints which comes into the re-ranking space right uh dirtiman is search engine optimization connected to recommendation engine okay seo or search engine optimization is more li more linked to google keywords right it is not same as recommendation engine search engine optimize seo is more about uh, when you want to place some keywords which which can be uh, good in terms of marketing right uh, that's into uh, that goes into the seo strategy it's 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 not it does not comes directly into the uh sphere of uh, of recommendation engines or analytics it's more in terms of optimizing the keywords uh which you want so for example let's say you're trying to start a company and let's say the company deals with apparels and uh, you want to have good keywords right good catchy keywords and you can pay google to uh, do those things and and your company's website uh, will come at the first place when someone finds those or types those or those keywords right so that's what uh seo is and but but it's obviously not directly related to the recommendation engine architecture okay 
I, I hope Abhay and Dhritiman, I uh, answered your question. So please do type in in here. Uh, again, because of the of the of the constraint of the time, I will have to manage uh, uh, the content as well as your questions. So so please do please but please do keep on asking questions. So any any questions still here? Any any questions still? Uh, what is about the what part and about the architecture part? Any 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 uh, any questions? Any thoughts? Sir, one doubt. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, since we are doing re-ranking in the third step, while doing scoring only, we are ordering it in the uh, in a sequence. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the in the in the scoring part, uh, it's yes, it's ordering in a certain uh, in a certain sequence, right? And uh, this is primarily driven by uh, the user's uh, user history, and it's very much linked to what videos, uh, 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 what what things they have uh, done, right? But in the re-ranking part, it's 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 more on what all things have been done, right? On on basically uh, taking into account a lot of external factors, not just out. So, for example, let's say Netflix is uh, trying to recommend, and let's say your Netflix account is also linked to a Gmail account. So, in the scoring part, what will happen is that let's say you have watched the uh, let's say movie like uh, Mission Impossible, uh, so it will try to use that. But let's in re-ranking con context, and this is more, more, more. Uh, I will say more applicable to YouTube uh, videos. Is that it will take into account a lot of factors uh, to basically finally uh, give you the finest recommendation, right? So hence there is a two-stage way of, uh, of 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 doing it. Okay. I I hope that that was clear. Okay, uh, I will, I will, I yes, will. Sir. Cool, cool. So now, now the main part of it. Okay, guys. So you need to basically understand this because uh, this is what is the main crux of it. And uh, re-ranking one more, please. Okay, okay. Re-ranking, uh, Tanmay. So uh, uh, let's say, let's say uh, you are going into the YouTube and you are you are getting some videos. Let's say you are a health freak, right? So you are a you are a fitness freak. And you have been uh, trying to search about how to be more fit and and do some exercises, right? And uh, previously, you also have have watched some kind of videos uh, related to fitness and workouts, right? Uh, now, uh, now with this information, obviously, the likelihood of of videos related to workouts might be more, right? But, but at the same time, uh, let's say in your social media. You are also trying to do more things related to something else. Okay, let's say uh, you are discussing about arts, or let's say you are discussing about some kind of of creative things. So uh, that can also come into account when the re-ranking is happening, right? So it's just not happening in silos. So it's there are a lot of factors which come into pay place, which are like some kind of additional constraints, not just the in immediate factors, not just the immediate factors, a lot of factors which comes into picture. To get you the final recommendation, right? So it's just not, uh, 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 just not like the previous things which is happening, immediate things which is happening, but 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 more of from an uh, kind of aggregating everything and and giving you a re-ranked score, right? Okay, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, just not historical behavior of that particular workout, but in terms of everything, maybe in terms of your other social media. Uh, pages uh, in terms of your Google search, everything, and then the re-ranking happens, right? So otherwise, uh, it will just give pure importance to your historical behavior on YouTube, but uh, uh, not to anything else. But it here in this case, you are re-ranking because of but of other factors as well. Yeah. Okay. So in terms of uh, of of uh, the two distinct uh, uh, recommendation engines. Uh, that is followed. One is uh, called collaborative filtering, and another is called uh, the content filtering. Okay, so the idea is very simple. Okay, we'll not go into the maths of it, uh, given the the limitations of the of the of their time. But let's try to understand the intuition behind it. Okay, what happens? Okay, so first let's try to talk about collaborative filtering. Okay, uh, what is collaborative filtering? So collaborative filtering basically uses uh, similarities between users and items to give you recommendations. Okay, I'll give you a very simple example, guys. So 
let's say i i like uh i like action movies okay and a, a friend of mine also likes action movies but at the same time also likes drama movies right so what is the likelihood that i can also be recommended drama movies right because both of uh, both of us are are liking what action movies right so with that kind of an uh, approach like uh, for example my profile and your profile matches a lot so hence the things which you like there is a good possibility there is a good probability that i might also like right so hence it is called collaborative filtering right so for example uh, if you see this uh, in the small image here so there are like five people a b c d e and they have got likes and dislikes about few things like gaming laptop reading painting whatever right so uh, what what do you think would be the the liking of e e part what do you think would be the liking of e part b any guesses will it be a like or dislike Yeah, so dislike, dislike. Everyone thinks it's a dislike. Everyone thinks it's it's a dislike. Yes, like. Okay, someone thinks a like. Someone thinks a dislike. Maybe like, it's like. No audio is available. Uh, I I hope I'm audible to all. I'm hope I'm audible to all guys. yeah okay so again the the information that we have is less but uh, if you just if you just go on from the concept point of you guys so uh, let's see is very much closer uh, like uh, c and e right so they do both like painting and they both like uh, reading books right and uh, uh, but but uh, but c doesn't like uh, whatever let's say this laptop spending right and hence uh, in that case it might be a dislike right uh um, but uh but at the, at the same time if you if you also go by b's and e's behavior so in case of b and uh, e so both of them like reading books both of them does do not like gaming right b both of them do not like gaming and also this person has given a dislike to it right so if the closest to uh, e is both b and c and both of them have disliked the laptop thing hence there is uh uh is hence there is a huge possibility that there can be a dislike right so the idea is uh blank in in games so this this person has not voted not voted not voted okay not, not voted right so i have not i have not given any vote right this can happen you always do not like or dislike a particular uh, item in your in your space right so that's what collaborative filtering means right so it it takes into account uh, your interest the other user interest and based on that uh, uh, based on that guys if you are not talking i would request to please mute yourself okay so please mute yourself if you're not if you're not talking is does it like kenyas neighbors right so the the uh, the point of 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 clustering uh, uh the point about uh, uh about clustering kenyas neighbors the distance equation do come into picture yes they, they do come into picture so that's the inner algorithm of collaborative filtering right so i will talk about it so there are ways of you can calculate the distances Uh, so yeah that is one of the ways of of k nearest neighbors or clustering to find the distance of how or how these uh, people are closer to one another but but there are more important metrics uh, which i will like to focus upon right so uh, moving on to the other one uh, so one is collaborative and within collaborative there is called user based collaborative filtering another is called item based collaborative filtering okay what is user based guys user based is like based on the users right so if there are users and users based on the end users this thing is happening on terms of items it's like based on the item kind of an uh, uh, filtering right so based on what items the user is liking or disliking the collaborative filtering is happening right so but but essentially the idea of collaborative filtering is right this is happening in collaboration of people so there is not one person right uh, there are like like few people who are like you uh and based on that there's an exchange of likes and dislikes and based on that the recommendation is happening right so hence it is called collaborative the word collaborative right uh the other one is called content okay in content recommendation what is happening is like it is entirely driven by uh your past history okay so if you have liked something if you have disliked something 
So whatever you have seen, it will recommend based on what you have seen. If you have disliked something, obviously it will not recommend of what you have not of what you have disliked, right? So in what is the key difference between content and collaborative? Content is where it's trying to get into the space of where uh, there are different uh, there are different uh, uh, people and there are different uh, users, right? And uh, uh, and based on that, the the recommendation is happening. Whereas in content, uh, the user is recommended based on his or her past behavior, right? Nothing else goes into the uh, into into this and to this uh, recommendation engine, right? So in KNN we have target field fixed unlike collaborative filtering, right? In in in, in KNN in KNN we have the target variable. So I said like in terms of finding out the equation or distance, there are two major measures. Was in cosine similarity, and the another is uh, if it's a text we use the TF IDF uh, a matrix, right, to uh, find the uh, the similarity between the words. Clustering is also used. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, but but KNN also works on the distance method, and it works on the principle of if there are two two things which are closer, they are grouped into the one space. Does item based work across two different apps? Uh, no. Generally, if the apps are not related to each other, if you do not give the permission, which is not generally the case, like if Google app is there, obviously all of its sub apps are linked to each other and it can flow from one app to another. But let's say these are apps, independent apps. So, for example, Swiggy and Zomato, right? Obviously, they never they are competitors and they will never share the information. Uh, so, obviously, if you are liking uh, a a good dessert in in a Swiggy, that will not go and pass into uh, Zomato until there is a information which is being spent, uh, which is being sent from one app to another, right? It it can happen in terms of of Google apps, right? But not in terms of very specific product apps. Does it answer your question, Ramesh, uh, Aditya, Nudrat? Sorry, uh, Nudrat, uh, Aditya. Did, did you guys? Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Can I? Yeah, go go ahead. Uh, someone okay. was asking something. Yeah. Yeah, I was asking something. The content-based filtering. I'm a little confused because content-based filtering, as you told, it uses it uses user past history, like whatever yeah. he has searched and all. Yeah. But in user collaborative, it also will use the same data only. No, whatever the user has searched. No, uh, in the in the in the again uh, in the user content and the user collaborative. Okay, so in content, what is happening? Whatever single I user. have searched, the single user. Okay. Okay. Based on that, the recommendation is happening. But in user collaborative, what is happening is like based on similar users, right? For example, if you are a user, okay. and if I am similar to you, so let's say I am also trying to like n things and uh, okay. you are also trying to like n k n plus k things and these k are mutually exclusive right so i can be recommended yes, those sir. k additional items that's what is the difference okay sir okay did, okay. did you get it so that's why the, the 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 entire concept of collaborative comes into picture because there are multiple users right in in collaborative right so there's a there is a uh, pass on of the information from one user to another and based on that, the uh, the recommendation is passed on. But on the other hand, in terms of content, it's it's most most on in terms of uh, of of the, of the filtering. So uh, I would like to really Sir, go. Can, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Can you give me an example where specifically we use content based? Because generally in recommendation, it's generally among whatever the generally the collaborative way only. Because many people will buy. Like if I many people will buy water bottle and and some sports equipments to get sports like uh, socks, bands and sure, all sure, because sure, they sure. use it sure. they, that works accordingly. Can you go sure. with you some? Sure, I will. I will give you an example. Sure. So uh, now uh, in the current phase, uh, it's majorly which is uh, the hybrid model comes into picture, which uses both content and collaborative. Okay, so most of these uh, uh, tech giants, including the food uh, e-commerce companies or even YouTube or LinkedIn, they they use both. They are not single-handedly using only collaborative or single-handedly using only content because both of the algorithms, if you see, are very powerful in their own references. Right, content is also very important because a lot of times, a lot of times, let's say you are a single user. Okay, and uh, and I'm just trying to make this out, and uh, and let's see, you, I, I, my my history is not very much matched 
to other collaborative users, right? To other users, then what kind of recommendation will I get? So in that case, obviously my past uh, history can be checked and and recommendation can be given. Does that does that make sense? So that's how uh, most of the companies uh, work, right? So they are using both uh, the models, right? And I would like to, honestly, guys, I'd like to really uh, go on and 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 discuss about it uh, uh, in detail. Uh, but in in the objective of the workshop is really not get into detail of it, but just give you an heads up of what's it and and how it really works. So. If you guys are really interested uh, in learning about uh, recommendation engines and obviously uh, more, so recommendation engines is just not one uh, way of, of, of uh, I would say, uh, uh, solutions in the, in the analytics space. There are a lot many. So uh, what Ivy has done and, and it has recently, and it's, it has recently launched and a very, I would say a special uh, course, uh, which has been certified by NASCOM, which is the industry, uh, industry body and it's a leading industry body, uh, which has got a lot of these materials, right? And there are a lot of good instructors, a lot of good materials, and where you can be actually learn in depth uh, about how it works and and how it is basically gets gets applied into the industry, right? So there are a lot of case studies which goes into the into the way to just make you understand. So uh, if you are really interested to really get into the deep dive, uh, just FYI, uh, if you, uh, you you guys can really connect and 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 find out more, right? But but. But uh, uh, I will try to make use of this remaining 25 minutes because uh, we have a Python case study also. So uh, uh, yeah, so uh, so even though I want to go into the maths and really uh, show you that, but yeah, given the, uh, the constraints of the time, I might not be able to. So, uh, so in terms of the two recommendation engines, that's where they come into picture. One is content. One is collaborative, and uh, if you ask me that, okay, what what is used when and which kind of recommendation is used majorly? So it's the hybrid model which has really shaped up, right? So initially it was content uh, because uh, generally when you start on uh, you yourself as a user, you'd start uh, uh, generating the content and history gets generated, and right, and based on that the uh, the recommendations uh, comes into picture. Uh, but now in the current phase with a lot of people and a lot of, uh, of this technology being uh, being uh, available, both of this, which is a hybrid model of both content and collaborative uh, comes into uh, comes into play, right? So that's uh, that's how it goes, right? Now I will I will really come to the part of how this uh, uh, the similarity is calculated, right? So, Someone was telling about key nearest neighbors, right? So yes, that's a technique to basically find out and group uh, 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 like aspects or LM data points which are no, uh, closer to each other. But in terms of recommendation, uh, uh, basically there are two major concepts which is used. One is called term frequency and the inverse document frequency, which is in total is called TF-IDF. So TF-IDF is a very important concept. People who know about natural language processing here, uh, 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 have might have your, got an idea of what TF-IDF is. So it's basically a way to find out the importance of word. And I will give you a um, hint of about it. And the second is cosine similarity, okay? So these are the two concepts which are basically, which are majorly used, okay? So there are other concepts as well, but these are the two majorly used uh, concepts in the recommendation where it is used for what objective? The objective is to find similar people or find similar preferences, right? The idea is to recommend, right? Uh, yes, exactly. TFIDF, right? So uh, high five to Akash because you have used it. So uh, uh, what is term and what is uh, uh, inverse document frequency? So I will I will not get into the entire uh, slide right now, but I will tell you the intuition again. Uh, so if you if let's let's take a text, right? And a text is filled with a lot of words, right? Like the is right, uh, and there are some important words also right and the entire text so for example in your resume let's let's take example of your resume so there are a lot of words in there but there are some words which are very very important and you know those words right so what is the what is the what is your uh, what is your take so is do do, do those words appear a lot of times in your resume or, or or less times what is your take so which are which are really really important the, the importance the keywords will be more yeah. So, for example, let's say you have done a random forest case study, but it does not mean you write random forest 10,000 times. 
in your resume, right? You have done one case study, but that's a important thing. You know that's important, right? And the, and the recruiter knows that it's important, but it might appear less number of times, right? Right. So that's where the the point of uh, term frequency and inverse document frequency uh, comes in, or TFIDF in in fact. So it basically tries to give more importance to the words, which is less but are more important right so that's how the tfidf matrix uh, works out right the other matrix is uh, uh, guys is is cosine similarity so cosine similarity is basically uh, is a way to measure how uh, so where is the difference between two non zero vectors right so for example uh, if i just give you an example like these are the two uh, let's say uh, uh, names bernard and Clas clarissa and it's a Bernard has given uh, uh, a rating of four to Iron Man and rating of three to Pride and Prejudice, right? Clarissa has given a rating of, of five to Iron Man and rating of five to Pride and Prejudice. Now the idea is we need to check how close is Bernard and Clarissa, right? How close are Bernard and Clarissa? And how do we do that? We can use a cosine similarity, which is nothing but a dot product of two vectors, right? So, um, so cos theta is equal to b into c by the product of each vector's magnitude, right? So again, guys, don't be afraid of the maths. You don't need to actually solve it on payment pen on paper. Uh, there, are, there are codes and you can just do it on the go in, in Python, right? But the concept is either you use the TF-IDF matrix, right? To see like which are the uh, common words or similar words and the other other version is cosine similarity, right? So these are the two major approaches that is being used as a part of recommendation engines to, uh, to find out, okay, this and this can be grouped, right? So when we have to use, so we will use cosine similarity. It is, uh, it is, it is a, it is, better than your uh, clustering. So clustering is also a way of, of grouping uh, grouping your uh, common objects, right? But cosine similarity is considered to be a more better, right? It's more objective. So when we are using a content uh, uh, recommendation, and I will now take you directly to, uh, uh, to building a content recommendation engine. So where we will basically work with, uh, with building an uh, content recommendation engine, right? So uh, I know we we are in bit short of time, but I will try to give you an enhanced side row. Okay, so this is this initial part was more on the concept part, right? So where we initially talked about, so just to summarize that, what is recommendation? Why at the first point recommendation is engine is important because a lot of now a lot of things are become hyper personalized, right? When I use the word hyper personalized, it simply means that each one of us wants very specific recommendation based on our past or uh, history or our, our likes and dislikes, right? We all want to be treated differently. And obviously in, in terms of the company, it's not able to uh, to do everything. So to build actually and, and, and send in uh, into uh, and send an uh, kind of an uh, person to ask what is your like or dislike, but it can happen through organically through kind of these machine learning algorithms. Uh, the most important one being the recommendation engines, right? And uh, we talked about the two more and most important types of, of, of recommendation engines, which is content and collaborative, right? Collaborative is where uh, the recommendation is based on your and the other user preferences and based on that there is a combination and, and then the recommendation happens and the other one is basically content where where based on your previous uh, experience only your past uh, 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 history the recommendations are generated right and in terms of the concepts which are the two concepts that we talked about one is uh, term frequency and inverse document uh, frequency which is tfidf and other is the cosine similarity right the cosine similarity is used to generate the closer words so that's uh, uh how does it know unique words to take uh, uh, in idf and how does it know the unique words to take so uh basically what we uh, do uh, is that in any kind of text data we remove all kind of stop words right so obviously the most important words are kept right and then based on that so what happens essentially in in an uh, in an tf idf since you asked is like for each word for each word, okay, in that entire document, this TF-IDF value is calculated, okay? This TF-IDF value is calculated and the, and the words which are like closer to each other or closer are having high TF-IDF, they are taken for the next steps, 
okay but the uh, unique words how do we how does it know so the words are generated using the tokens right so uh, basically the, that's one of the initial steps uh, of data uh, uh, text pre processing i would say and that's how the uh, uh, the unique set of tokens is generated and on based on that uh, you can do lemmatization and stemming and then that tfidf can be uh, calculated okay so that's how it happens so uh, before i really start and uh, uh, on on the on the on the coding part any any questions from your side any questions uh, from your side uh, i hope you got some idea i would definitely i would definitely vouch that uh, you might not get the entire idea but at least some idea of how how the recommendation is things uh, systems are are working and why it's important i hope you got that concept yes sir yes okay. sir cool so got some idea yeah. okay that's 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 uh, really good to hear okay so now i will go into the coding part how i can get the data so we will send you the data uh, cosine cosine has a more uh, major uh, uh, has a major advantage in terms of finding the similarity okay so i will uh, we will send the data don't worry it's the part of kaggle it's an open data so uh, so let me take you the, to the to the uh, to the project okay so basically it's an uh, movie lens data and uh, if you guys have i think most of you are or all of you are aware of imdb ratings so there is also called tmdb ratings right uh yeah, so in terms of tmdb ratings we have got two kind of data sets one is a full data set so it has got uh, uh around 750000 tag applications right around 26 million uh, ratings and 45000 movies by 27 uh, 270000 users right so it is a full data set and there is a small data set which has got around 100000 ratings and 1300 tag applications uh uh 29000 movies by 700 users right so we will be using basically the small data set uh, to finally build the model right so what we will do essentially is three things right so we will build a simple recommender so simple recommender will not use uh, any kind of uh, content right uh, and uh, the second step we will be building a content uh, based recommendation we will not be building any collaborative uh, because of the constraints of 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 the time so what i thought of of uh, building the uh, um, basically a simple recommender and as a simple recommender it will not be personalized right it will not be personalized and a content recommender will be personalized okay so let's try to uh, uh, let's try to uh, uh, start with that okay so basically i will be uh, importing certain packages which includes pandas numpy matplotlib uh, so how many guys are here are good in terms of python how many of you guys are good in terms of python here all of you uh, some of you basics okay beginner level no worry so uh, okay so don't get bogged down in terms of the codes guys i i i always feel that codes are something uh, which you will get you will get okay don't need to be worried about the codes uh, what you need to essentially know is the approach the concept and the codes is something which will flow you will get there's there's stack overflow there is this codes online there's a lot of lot of things uh, by which you can get the codes so don't get bogged down by the codes okay so uh, so these are like the uh, the packages that we will be using so we'll be using a bit of stemming uh, also so and we will be using the count factorizer the tf idf and uh, we will also be using uh, the uh, the uh, the nltk corpus right so basically we since we are dealing with uh, with words here right so uh, the first thing obviously let's uh, uh, read the data set so this just in the interest of the time i've read the data set so uh, excuse me yeah Go so ahead. like uh, as you have uh, uh, imported uh, for st stemming also as well as lemmatization also so like we have to use both because they do the same thing no they essentially do not do the the the, the same thing uh, lemmatization is different and stemming is different because uh, in terms of stemming they return the root words a uh, lot of times which does not make sense but limitization will always return a uh, a meaningful uh, word so basically both of them will return the root word a lot of times limitization works better a lot of times stemming works better so and it's like you can also use sometimes both but most of the times you prefer to use either of them so just for the interest we have we have used uh, we have imported both right so 
but but they essentially do not do the same thing they have different approaches of finding the root word okay thank you okay sure so the first thing is that we are uh, uh, reading the metadata so it has got around 45466 uh, rows 24 columns uh so this is the uh, data so let's try to have a uh, look about the data so we have got uh, uh whether it's adult or not which collection budget genre of the movie home page id imdb id original language original title like toy story jumanji overview release date revenue run time spoken languages status tagline uh title video vote vote average and vote count okay so these are the important columns which will be used okay so first thing is that we basically uh uh okay so let me actually rerun okay so yeah let it get started okay so let it read so the first thing uh, that we do is we clear, clean the genre uh, so uh, just try to see the the headings uh, once we uh, once we do once we see the uh, the cleaned up genre and the genre so let it it's a big data so uh, it, it takes some time to read okay so let let it get uh, read so uh, by the time uh, i can ex explain it so in this line we are just uh, cleaning up the uh, uh, the uh, the genre columns if you have if you seen the genre column it had got certain so uh, this genre column right so this is what we will we will uh, get so finally when we clean it up uh, we will get things like animation comedy and family so in in a, in a much more clean way uh, yeah so again yeah so it has read it okay so what does cleaning mean here i mean we are filtering it out or we are uh, deleting cleaning it? cleaning here means because if you see the genre here so we are removing all of these like id and id 35 what we only want uh, in terms of genre is like what the actual genres of the movie right so animation comedy and family right so if you if you just see these two columns so one is id 60 name id id 35 so what we re require in terms of genre is the actual genre which is animation comedian family so which genre this particular movie belongs to right that's that's what cleaning here means okay sir thank you okay okay now in terms of building a simple recommender this is not something which uh, this in terms of what uh, a movie recommender can work so here basically what we do is like we create a weighted rating and this weighted rating takes into account the number of votes uh and minimum votes to be listed okay and uh and r which is the average rating of the movie and c which is the mean vote across the whole report right so we use all of this and we we use this formula which is v by v plus m into r plus m by v plus m into c where uh v is the number of votes m is the minimum votes required to be listed r is the average rating and uh, c is the mean vote so one threshold that we apply is guys we use a 95% threshold what is this cutoff means is that uh for us for a movie to be recommended it needs to be it needs to have votes more than the 95% of the movies in the list right then only will that movie will get recommended so let's say if there are 100 people and if let's say five five uh, people need to be recommended they need to have more marks than the other and uh, uh 95 people right so that's what the 95% threshold means so uh, basically what we do is like we calculate the vote count and this is the vote average so this is the the mean average is around 5.24 similarly we do the vote count so the 95% is 434 right so that is the the vote count uh or the count of uh, of votes which needs to be the minimum threshold right then what we do is like we change the year into an date time uh format so md year we basically clean it into an date time format uh, because when we're reading it's not in date time format and uh, then what we do is like uh we basically use this particular uh, threshold which is m and we see like how many movies we are uh, getting so out of the initial number of movies there are only 222274 movies which are getting uh, uh extracted right so this is these are the movies right which have a higher vote count which is greater than the 
the cutoff, which is 95%, which is 434. So they need to have at least a uh, vote count of 434. For example, Toy Story has a vote count of 5415, right? Now we use this particular same formula, which is the uh, uh, the formula that we talked about, right, in the in the uh, uh, initial step, and then we calculate the weighted rating, right? And this is where we can we are applying this formula, right, on the on the uh, of weighted rating, and then let's try to sort it out. And based on this, we we basically come up with so the top fifteen movies are these, which are Inception. Dark Knight, Interstellar, Fight Club, Lord of the Rings, Pulp Fiction, Shawshank Redemption. So these are the movies which is which is coming out of a simple recommender. What is the methodology that we're using here? We are using this uh, methodology of weighted rating, right? This is the methodology we're using. And also with the additional threshold that it should be applied in 95 percentile, right? So the movie should get at least 95 percent of the uh, uh, of the of the uh, of the vote counts, right? More than the ninety five percent of the vote counts. So that is a simple recommend recommender. But what is the drawback of this? Uh, in a way, the drawback of this movie of this approach is that it is not personalized. Everyone will get the same recommendation, right? It is not a it is not a personalized uh, recommendation. What if what if if I want uh, based on this movie, I need to have separate recommendations, right? In that case, we what we come into for content-based recommendation, right? So based on the uh, the previous, right? So for this, I will be using the small data set, right? So uh, uh, which is the the smaller data set which I said initially, like the small data set. This is the data set that I will be using, and based on that, I will be going on and building the. Uh, so these are the few certain. Uh, 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 the rows which are not required. So let's see the link small. So these are like the the the, the head of the, the first couple of rows. So how many data points that we have? We have got around 9099. So basically I filtered out uh, the uh, the movies which are in the small data set. So we have around 90, uh, 9,099 movies. So this is the small data set which we'll use because obviously we, we, are, not, uh, we are not running the content recommender on the entire. Then we basically go on in terms of some cleaning on the on the tagline, like fill in a. We are removing NAs with blank, and we are uh, creating a description column of uh, which is an overview plus tagline. So that's the main description. And uh, now, if we see the tagline in tagline, if there are any NAs, they have been removed with a blank, with no blank. And uh, we also have a description column, uh, uh, right? So we have a description column here. Now here we basically calculate the two things which I talked about the TFIDF uh, matrix, right? On on what are or on what I'm calculating on this particular column which we created, which is description, right? So I I'm creating the I created a TFIDF TF fit transform SMD description. So this is the column which I'm using for calculating the TFIDF matrix, and at the same time I'm also calculating the Cosine similarity, right? So uh, I'm using the TFIDF matrix and using the uh, uh, the formula, which is the uh, dot product of the two, right? I'm calculating the cosine similarity. So if I see the cosine similarity of one, so this is the array it looks like. Now using this, using this, I will go ahead and build the uh, recommendation engine. So the first step is I built the description column then i built the uh, uh, then i built the uh, the tfidf matrix using the tfidf matrix i built the cosine similarity right and uh, finally uh, now i will go on in terms of so this is the uh, the small uh, code for building the uh, content recommender so what it does is is basically using the cosine scores that we generated right so these are my cosine scores so using the cosine scores is basically it sees like uh, so it it will be in function right so based on the title of the movie it will try to uh, find out uh, the best movie uh, and uh, and and uh, and and will basically predict it. So let's say if, if this is my movie, The Godfather, and uh, I will use the same function. So based on Godfather, so what are the uh, top ten recommendation? It is Godfather Part Two, Family Made. Johnny dangerously. So it's all based on the genre of Godfather, right? So obviously it makes sense that if uh, if I've watched Godfather, it's giving me the first recommendation as, as Godfather Part Two, right? So similarly, if I if I if I if I've watched The Dark Knight, so what is my top ten recommendation? Then in that case, it's giving me recommendations like The Dark Knight Rises, Batman Forever, Batman Returns, 
so everything related to batman right so i can basically give any movie uh, and based on this movie it can give me personalized recommendations right so uh just to summarize guys uh, i know uh, uh, i i took it in in a best of uh, faster manner uh, but just to summarize we basically first built a simple recommender right the simple recommender was generalized it did not had it would give the same recommendation for every uh, to everyone right and we used the weighted rating to build that recommender and based on that these are the top 15 movies which needs to be recommended right then we went on in building the content based recommender so for content based we use a smaller data set we only what we did uh, basically we created a description column which was a, a combination of overline overview and tagline column and on this description column we calculated the tfidf matrix right and uh, in the tfidf matrix uh, i uh, basically uh, using we used the cosine similarity and using the cosine similarity we used uh, calculated the content recommender so we basically uh, found out that based on any movie that i give i can basically extract the the top 10 movies right so uh so this this code the data set uh, as well as the uh, uh uh the pdf that we have uh, we will obviously give it to you all uh and uh, yeah so we, we use cosine we use cosine right so we use cosine here okay so this is where we are using the cosine okay so this the this is where we are using the the cosine okay and uh, uh uh so it is it's a simple content recommender so basically based on what i previously watched it will it's basically recommending the next 10 movies that i can watch right so um uh this is where i will basically wrap up so it's uh, so it's eight so i hope yeah go ahead go ahead go ahead yeah uh, so if we see the uh, the recommender and the content based the recommender is more useful right in that case because uh, now, because after the percentage count only the the recommendation is taking place but in case of content one uh, we are just filtering out uh, i mean uh, maybe randomly or maybe uh, based on our uh, liking and everything and then we are applying tf and idf on that and then cosine and everything so right. Uh, so a recommender one is more uh, what to say a uh, uh, the recommended one to be used uh, right or the content one so uh, this is a simple recommender right you would yes. not like to uh, give this as your top line solution because this will just generalize your uh, movies right so everyone gets the same kind of recommendations right so obviously you want something which is personalized that based on something you get a different kind of an uh, answer and that's where the content recommender is coming so this is basically taking into into account what you have watched so for example in this case i have watched the godfather and based on that it is using the cosine similarity to find out which are the movies which are most similar to godfather and hence recommending uh, uh, yes definitely the, the content recommender is more important right because it's more personalized right because for every movie you are getting a different set of recommendations okay thanks thank you yeah. uh, i had one query so sure. uh, this uh, recommendation is done on a real time basis right it takes about mm -hmm. uh, half a second to give recommendation based on a previous uh, history or cookies that the uh, website has collected so right. i wanted to know what is the relevance of uh, time complexity in case of uh, time and space complexity in case of uh, real time uh, engine displays for recommendation so in uh, so the time and space complexity is nothing which is only applicable to the recommendation it can be applicable to any kind of analytical solution so obviously in recommendation uh, you need to have uh, it can be a bit more because uh, the user is is logging in and you have to give the recommendation at that point of time so uh, in terms of time obviously it has to be streaming data your your data will not sit in your local it will be sitting in the cloud and the, excuse me and the model will will, will function in by itself and uh, because the, uh, the the model will be built right it will be deployed in the cloud and uh, based on the your previous uh, watch it will be recommending it right so nothing will be uh, human controlled or it will be all automated and it will work in a pipeline kind of environment where the data is always streaming and and the, and the recommendations are always getting generated okay so that's that's how it uh, happens
thank you so much yeah so uh, yeah so for who is new to the who is new to the platform obviously uh, for for that person there is no uh, previous history right so in that case uh, a simple recommender will, might work right because um, uh because you do not have actually any history for a machine to uh, to work upon right but if using the and since uh, right now a lot of apps uses the your access to google and obviously the information related to the google and your uh, search history and that's how it becomes all integrated and some kind of of recommendations do come to that's get generated so that's how it, it works okay so thank you so much guys actually i have called to join uh, and hence i need to drop off i hope you guys uh, enjoyed i'm really sorry i cannot take i really wanted to take all the questions but uh, i have got a client call uh, so i hope uh, you you guys enjoyed it uh, if if you have any queries uh, feel free to drop me an email uh, or reach to uh, yajat uh, uh, about it uh, and he can uh, um yeah so this is my email id right and uh, and obviously if you have more interest with the course uh, you can obviously speak to yajat and uh, and and there will be a lot of people out there who can help you out and we can obviously deep dive in detail right so uh, uh, so i will be signing off and i really hope uh, and and pray that all of you stay safe uh, during these challenging times and uh, yeah so uh, uh, just stay safe uh, just keep on learning uh is someone was saying something sorry okay uh so i will see you guys uh thank you so much uh, uh for attending this workshop i hope you liked it and i would love to see you again okay so till then uh, take care and keep learning and i will see you guys okay, sir. okay? thank you sir thank you so thank much you. take care guys and have a good evening thank you and so a much, good sir. weekend ahead thank you so much bye bye thanks bye so one quick announcement guys thank you mr pandu was indeed a great session um one quick announcement guys so iv has launched a very special nascom certified data science course for the meritorious students who want to make a career in data industry but find it difficult to you know pay for the high quality courses fees so in this course the learners can pay the tuition after they get a job with a minimum guarantee ctc that too monthly as part of their salary okay it is a income sharing agreement model so you can uh, i'm sharing the link in the chat window you can have a look if you want also i'd request all of you if you find the session you know very good so please take some time to give us the feedback it really helps us a lot to uh, create such workshops which are which you would like to have in the future as well